These first three annotations are from the poem Badger by John Clare. The first line that I underlined was, The shepherd's dog will run him to his den. And I didn't understand what he was referring to in this line, whether he meant that the dog was leading the shepherd to the badger's den, or whether the dog was chasing the badger to his den. It's just a confusing way of wording this line. The next part that I underlined was the badger turns and drives them all away. I thought this was important because it connects to the pathos and the passion of the badger. Um, not really the logos because it's illogical that he would do this, drive them all away, such a small badger. But it's because of his pathos that he's able to do this. I thought these last lines were important because they were pretty indicative of the message of the entire poem. It shows that it's really not about the badger, but it's more about human nature and how we really relate to an animal like the badger. The next three annotations are from the poem A Narrow Fellow in the Grass by Emily Dickinson. And the first part that I underlined was about being a child and barefoot, which she relates to being innocent and vulnerable and sort of unprotected out there in the world. The next part was about when she tried to grab the snake and it easily just slithered away. Um, it's like a feeling when you're trying to grab something that's right there in front of you, but it's so evasive and elusive that you just can't grasp onto it. It can be a very frustrating feeling. This last part, I believe, is the poet Emily Dickinson expressing her universal love and friendship towards all creatures on this planet and her connection with nature. And that sort of goes along with the last poem about the badger, how it's really more about human nature 
rather than just the animals. These last three annotations are from the poem The Porcupine by Galway Kennel. I thought that this line was important because it shows the pathos and work ethic of the porcupine and also talks about the pathos of humans. The next part I underlined was relating the author to the porcupine having his quills erected, and that's like anyone who is ready to attack someone in self-defense, anyone who's ever been threatened maybe had that feeling. These final lines that I annotated along with the previous two, I think show a connection between the porcupine and the author relating humans to the animal, just like in the previous two poems.